An important thing we want to remember is that always invisibly the world consciousness is functioning. It isn't consulting us. It isn't asking for our permission. It is functioning no matter what you do. And while it functions, it brings 50% of the evil and 50% of the good. And you have no way, if you're not in truth, to prevent that from flowing through you as your experience. Now, it's important to get a good feeling of what this world consciousness is. It will enable you to know that without the Christ mind, you're at the mercy of a force that controls you. The world consciousness is functioning now all around us. And to the degree that we are not in the Christ mind, we are in that consciousness of the world. And so everything in our life that is negative is the degree to which we are not in the consciousness of God, but are in the world consciousness instead. Now when you look out and do not see God, you naturally fall into opinions about what you do see. When other people look out and do not see God, they form opinions about what they see. This thought, these opinions, these sensations become active in the world mind. They feed back and become the world mind. You might say that from the moment of birth, every sensation you have felt accumulated is what you are this moment. You are the accumulation of every sensation since the moment of birth as a human being. Most of that, being unaware of God, becomes nothing more than mental opinion, dream consciousness, and yours, mine, his, and hers, all of this mental opinion becomes world consciousness, and then world consciousness feeds it back to us. And this continues to flow and flow and flow. It lives out its world, which is not the kingdom of God. It recreates images which are not the kingdom of God inhabitants. It recreates forms. It recreates conditions. All of this is in the dream world consciousness. That's where we have our businesses. That's where we have our human relationships. And when you leave them there, they're at the mercy of the world consciousness. They're at the mercy of the whirlwind. They're at the mercy of all of the conditions of the world consciousness. That's why these inexplainable events occur when we're wiped out, when we lose important possessions, when relationships are broken up. The world consciousness has no regard for what we consider important to us. It's running its world government, completely independent of God. And unless we have a change of consciousness, we leave ourselves in a world that God didn't create, in a world of imagination. So the change over, the pass over, The new consciousness is the preparation for the way in which the Comforter comes unto you and lifts you out of the world consciousness. And in lifting you out of the world consciousness, it lifts everything that you are. It lifts all of your relationships, all of your possessions, 
all of your life experience out of the world law of good and evil into the law of my perfection in all things. Your new consciousness is no longer world consciousness, but God consciousness, Christ consciousness. That's the meaning of this line. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. And if ye loved me, ye would have, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. You're being told that the Christ consciousness makes you one with the Father. You don't go under the Father. You don't find source without Christ consciousness. You're in world consciousness. But when you find Christ in you, you're in Christ consciousness, which goes unto the Father. And you're one with the Father. You're in the Christ consciousness, which becomes the law unto you. Now I've told you, before it comes to pass, that when it is come to pass, you might believe. The visible makes known to us so that we will turn to the invisible. When the visible is no longer with us, we must find in the invisible our way. Your Christ consciousness is your invisible way. You've been trying all the visible ways. Some work and some don't. The invisible way through Christ always works. It lifts you out of the 50% universe, out of the 50% good and the 50% evil. It lifts you out of the action of the world consciousness because it goes unto the Father. It lifts you out of sickness. It lifts you out of fear. It lifts you out of worry. It lifts you out of the conditions of being human. I have told you before it comes to pass that when it has come to pass you might believe. The Christ is going to reveal that there is no corporeal body that you're living in a dream body when you think you're living in a physical body I've told you in advance so that when it comes to pass you will believe I'm going to show you that they can't keep me in a tomb why? because I have no body to put in a tomb this body you're looking at is the Christ body. This is the Christ body standing before you, teaching you. Your name may be Peter, your name may be John, and you may think I am a man, he's saying, but this is the Christ body. It is not the same kind of a body that you think it is. Why is it a Christ body? Because I have taken it out of the world consciousness. I was in the world consciousness as a man called Jesus. I took it out of the world consciousness. I became Christed. I became aware of my Christ body. The divinity of my being expresses as the Christ body and the Christ mind. And this is the Christ body and the Christ mind that is yours because my father and your father are one. And now I tell you this in advance so that when my Christ body cannot be entombed and kept there, you will know why. It is under the law of divinity. It cannot know death. It can never know death. And I tell you this so that you will know it is the truth of your Christ body. But I, the Christ, appearing to men as Jesus, I can walk through the tomb 
because I am in the conscious awareness of that Christ body. There's no point in teaching you about the conscious awareness of it after death. That won't do you any good. It's the conscious awareness of it before the entombment. The conscious awareness of Christ before, which makes impossible the experience of death which makes impossible those conditions which lead to death. I, Christ, am revealing these things that the world may be Christed, aware of its Christ identity. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. He is describing for us a change in consciousness that we must be ready to accept. The prince of this world must come and find nothing in us. Christ has revealed through a form called Jesus the miracle of perfection on earth where the world consciousness paints a picture of good and evil. But now the work has been demonstrated and the Christ in the form called Jesus is leaving because there is nothing more to do. The work is done. There is nothing more that the form called Jesus can do in the visible for the disciples. This is the place in consciousness where you begin to realize there is nothing more you can do in the visible. You must now come to that invisible. The visible is departing for, to, for you to turn to the invisible. The prince of this world is the world consciousness. The prince of this world is the carnal mind of the world. The universal carnal mind. But it will come and have find nothing in you. It will come and you will not be subject unto it. The dominion of the world mind is broken by your awareness of Christ in you. The prince of this world cometh and finds nothing in you. The prince of this world, the carnal mind, cannot for you present pictures of evil that you will accept, pictures of lack that you will accept, pictures of bad health that you will accept that's the prince of this world but in your Christ awareness it finds nothing in you this is the Christ consciousness that must be developed day by day until the world mind finds nothing in you until every evil on the face of the earth is instantaneously known to be impossible whether it's in your body or in someone else's body because spirit God is everywhere and there is no place where God and evil can exist at the same time there is no place where God and error can exist there is no place where God and a flood and a fire can exist at the same time there is no place where God can be and cancer at the same time it is impossible. The world mind will say, here is the cancer. The Christ mind will say, no, here is God. The world mind will say, here is the lack. Here is the famine. Here is the poverty. The world mind is lying. The Christ mind will say, no, here is God. The appearance of these things is because of the separation of our thought from God. Our thought being separated from God where the avenue through which world mind expresses these lacks, these limitations. But when you're in your Christ consciousness, conscious that Christ is where you are, that God is where you are, expressing as Christ, world mind, the prince of this world, finds nothing in you. 
It can express through Christ. That's not its instrument. Its instrument is the human mind. When you're in the Christ mind, it cannot express in you. It cannot express bad health. It cannot express poverty. It cannot express famine. It cannot express fear. It cannot express the opposites. The prince of this world cometh where there is Christ consciousness and finds nothing in you. You don't need any human protection. You don't need any human improvement. You have to be in the consciousness which world consciousness cannot penetrate to enter or defile. And obviously such a consciousness exists. Hereafter I will not talk much for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Now even the appearance of corporeality is to be removed. The last outpost of the world mind. Even corporeality is to be removed. All of the work then is turned into the invisible Christ. But that the world may know that I love the Father... And as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Arise is a commandment. It is a commandment to rise out of corporeal sense into the constant conscience, conscious awareness that here now is no human mind. Here now is the Christ mind. Here now I will recognize all that is of the world and know that it has no place in my consciousness for I am that expression called the Christ mind. The Christ mind expresses God. The Christ mind expresses God's self where you are. The Christ mind expresses divine wisdom, divine love. The Christ mind does not express the good and the bad of the world consciousness. Whatever you perceive that is of the world consciousness, you stand still until you make that reconciliation, that adjustment, now let's go back to your business for a moment. The world consciousness has painted your business in a certain way. Now let's walk out of one consciousness into the other and bring that business into the divine consciousness. Let's see how we can do that. In a human consciousness, we have certain concern about our business. That concern is not the Christ consciousness. That concern is because we're still a remnant of the world consciousness expressing. The world consciousness expresses that concern. The world consciousness expresses certain problems. There are no problems in the Christ. The world consciousness paints pictures of good and of bad. The world consciousness presents a physical business. Now let's take it out of physicality. Let's see that there is no physical anything. Spirit, being all, that which appears physical as a business, as customers, as patrons, as services, all of that is world consciousness expressing its concept and it will continue to govern its own concepts but I'm taking it out of the physical universe spirit is all and therefore right where all of the physical qualities of the business is all its sales charts 
all its customers, all its services, there is only invisible spirit, God. Ever perfect, ever harmonious, ever self-fulfilling in every detail, nothing missing, every need fulfilled. And now I'm taking myself out of the physical universe. I am spirit. And therefore I have no human mind here. The only mind that is here is the Christ mind. The Christ mind knows nothing about a physical business. Nothing at all. About a good business, a bad business, a successful one or a failing one. The Christ only knows about God's business. The Christ mind is the only mind I will accept as my mind. I have no concept about a business, none whatsoever, just resting in the Christ mind. Now, if I can stay in the Christ mind, I will know that the Christ mind is under the governorship of the Infinite Father. When I have no sense of physicality, I will have a feeling of the real existence of a universe made of spirit. Nothing is happening physically in my universe. There are no physical customers, there are no physical sales, there are no physical services, there's no physical building. It's a complete spiritual universe and it's functioning now right here. Everywhere, perfectly. Nothing can ever go wrong because I am the invisible Christ of God. And the only way I can express is to express what God is expressing, which is perfection. Whatever I do will manifest in the visible as righteousness as goodness, as a visible expression of invisible love, as fulfillment. It must because it is born of the Father in the Christ mind. It's independent of the world consciousness. Now I dwell here until I have that inner response that I am truly in the Christ mind. And as long as I can maintain the thread of consciousness in Christ, I can accept with confidence that the outer manifestation of all that concerns me will be a Christ expression. I started with a business, but it is really the wholeness of my being. Nothing can happen except a divine activity in the Christ mind. Now then, do you go out of the Christ mind or do you stay there? That will determine the manifestation in the visible. Your capacity to stand in this lifeline, which is the Christ mind, will determine the outer manifestation. If there are going to be fluctuations, it's because you are fluctuating in and out of the Christ mind. The more you remain in it, the more faithful you are to consciously remaining in it, the more you will notice your world is taking shape from that activity. Your spiritual fidelity in the Christ mind becomes your new consciousness unfolding as. the expression of the divine. 
consciousness of the divine unfolds or consciousness of the world unfolds. You're really choosing your whole life, your whole world, your whole universe when you decide to consciously stand in the Christ mind or to revert to a human consciousness. This is the crux. This is where it all happens. This is where the substance flows. Now it's the same in healing. Healing is nothing more than standing in the Christ mind knowing that where the illness appears it's only because there is someone there that I have accepted out of my Christ mind. In my Christ mind I don't know any ill people. I only know them in a human mind. Now they seem to be out there. Let's get them back in consciousness. There's nothing except in your consciousness. So let's take that sick person, no matter how far away, and see that they are in your consciousness. Now if they're in your consciousness, you're not going to help them out there. You're not in a spiritual consciousness if they're in your consciousness. You're in a human consciousness. You have been deceived. You are the world consciousness, individualized, and you have in your consciousness a sick person. You're not in Christ's mind then, are you? Now, how are you going to heal that person if you're still aware of a sick person? World consciousness is governing them, and you're not doing anything to stop it. Now, for you to be in the Christ mind, you'll have to drop your consciousness of a sick person. There isn't any in the Christ mind. And then it looks like you're losing control. You don't have your hands on the problem. That's how you do it. You get out of the consciousness of a sick person. Christ consciousness has no sick people. And if you're in the awareness that there is no sick person, you're moving into Christ consciousness. As long as you've got a sick person, you're not in Christ consciousness. And so you're crucifying the world mind, which says there's a sick person. You're saying, no, no. Spirit is all. Right there where the sick person is, is God. That's your Christ consciousness. And now you rest there. But don't go back to having a sick person. Christ consciousness says only God is present here and there. Don't look for improvement or else you've still got a sick person. Rest in the knowledge that here is Christ. That's my name. And there is the Spirit of God. There's no person there. There's the Spirit of God. Rest in it. Don't go back to the old consciousness. Now, this fidelity is how you develop your Christ consciousness. Every evil on the earth is attacking, not you, it's attacking Christ in you. It's attacking your belief that you're not Christ. It's trying to make you believe Christ isn't where you stand. And so everything that comes at you that is not of God is the way the world mind or the Antichrist attacks the Christ in you. Arise and let us go hence. Let us come out of the lower consciousness called the world consciousness, the mortal, the carnal. Rise to the Christ awareness that nothing is present but the Spirit of God. Live with that. Awake and asleep. Until it's solidified. Until it's dependable. Until you know this is my consciousness. Nothing exists but God. If that phone rings, wherever it's coming from, God is there, and only God. This is God's universe. This is God's substance everywhere. Not what I'm seeing, that's world consciousness. 
and you're identifying carnal mind. I think we have time to look at some quotations from Joel. Limitations are brought about not because your mind and body are evil or sick, but only because your mind and body have been conditioned by the belief of two powers. Now, if you're in God, consciousness, God is the power, so there's no other power to change that which is God. And therefore, what appears to be the power of having changed something is impossible because there's no other power. You're looking at the illusion of a power, the illusion of a condition caused by the illusion of power. There's no power to change spirit. The spirit is everywhere. If God is everywhere, error isn't there. If spirit is everywhere, and this is the hard part, if spirit is everywhere, matter isn't there. How can you heal what isn't there? Do you see you're trying to heal what isn't there? And if you're tempted to heal what isn't there, you're not in the Christ mind. Spirit is there. There's nothing to heal. Rest quietly in the consciousness that spirit is there. Until you have the feeling of it. This feeling intensifies. The more you practice, the more you have the assurance. A carnal mind is the belief that there are two powers. Christ mind is the knowledge that God alone is the power and there is no other possible power. There's only the power of God, which is perfect. And so I don't need a power to overcome something that is no power. That which it seems to be a power unto is only because I'm in the false mind. All right? Out of the false mind, in the Christ mind, Stand ye still, there are no powers to overcome. There is my power being my power right where the false power seems to be operating. Right where the sickness seems to be. My power is being. Rest in it until you have the assurance of it from within. Don't heal. That's the human mind. Don't be tempted to heal. The Christ mind reveals that only my spirit is present. There's no power to cause anything to be wrong. You're looking at the illusion of wrongness. You're looking at the illusion of lack, the illusion of limitation, the illusion of unemployment, the illusion of poverty. Get into Christ mind, accepting the power of God is functioning. It is here. It is there. It is everywhere. Until Christ's mind reveals the truth. And then you'll find that which appears as healing is your Christ consciousness made visible. A belief in the carnal mind, which is belief in good and evil, good powers and bad powers when actually there is no power to cause your problem. There is no power to cause your problem. It's all universal carnal mind presenting the illusion of problem. And you'll never know it in the human mind because it's the same mind. It's always the illusion of sickness the illusion of lack. It's all recreated through world mind to appear as. And only Christ mind is the answer. Christ mind doesn't fight, doesn't protect, doesn't battle. Christ mind rests in the knowledge 
that God is present doing a perfect job of running his perfect universe now to the degree that you can maintain that inner assurance in the face of what appears to be the problem you're in the Christ mind and you're breaking the carnal mind the prince of the world is finding no place in you now this you may not like but he says it if at this moment you could be made whole nothing would stop you from going out tomorrow and becoming sick or poor again unless you yourself had come to the realization that the healing which had taken place was not one of lack or limitation was not one of fear, sin or false appetites was not a healing of polio, cancer, blindness or deafness the healing was in being freed from the belief in two powers good and evil now deep in our subconscious we believe in two powers you believe your business can be bad tomorrow you believe your health can be bad tomorrow but your Christ mind doesn't believe that that's the remnant of the human mind You've got to work with that belief. It's the denial of who you are, you see. If you believe you can be sick tomorrow, you don't believe you're the Christ, do you? You're talking about a mortal being. You're fooled into the world consciousness which says you are a mortal being. And so this, the you that's going to be sick tomorrow in your belief, or could be, is your denial of Christhood now. You've got to repair that belief. No, I am the Christ, and I'm not going to be sick tomorrow or any day. I'm not even going to be a day older tomorrow. That you have to constantly work with until you know it's the truth. That's how you recognize your attainment of the realization of Christ's identity. Always, the world mind is forcing false beliefs through you and you inadvertently accept them by your latent fears or doubts. And yet, Christ isn't going to be any different tomorrow than Christ is today. If you're not anchored on that realization, you're in duality. See how all the work becomes an inner working in the conscious re-awareness, the constant reminder of your true identity until you can be awakened in the middle of the night and you're still the Christ before you open your eyes. You are the living spirit of God, the child of God, the son of God. You have one Father, the Divine Father, and every time you walk out of this realization and are caught napping, it's the world consciousness still sending its tide of thought through you, fooling you into mortality. Our whole consciousness is built on the realization of God constituting all being. Therefore, there is neither good nor evil. There is only God. God constitutes all being. Now, let's take our sick friends and see that God constitutes all being. We are malpracticing them by thinking they are sick. We're not helping them. We're not helping ourselves. We're letting the world mind express through our unenlightened consciousness. God constitutes all being. Now, if I wrote that on the blackboard, that wouldn't heal anybody, would it? 
So I can't write it on the blackboard of my mind and expect it to heal anybody either. There has to be a change in consciousness. Not writing it on the blackboard. You have to dwell with it. The fact that we say it now doesn't make it a power. It's the daily dwelling in the conscious awareness that God constitutes all being. And as you del dwell with it daily, you're praying without ceasing. You're abiding. You're resting. You're being faithful. You're standing in the secret place of the Most High. You're building that foundation which suddenly becomes so firm that when the news hits you, so-and-so is sick, it hits that consciousness then. You don't have to recover. It hits it then, and it's dissipated by your conscious awareness that, no, 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 God constitutes all being. And you're not trapped. Then you're not malpracticing anybody. Then the tides turn. Evil power cannot have any existence outside the mind that believes in it. And that's pinning it right down on the false consciousness. The only evil power there is is in the false consciousness, the mind that believes in it. But that's not the Christ mind, so it's not the mind you want to be in. You are never dealing with floods tidal waves or typhoons you're dealing with a universal malpractice which is made up of the belief in two powers now let's get rid of that second power there's only God power God power isn't making anybody sick therefore what's making somebody sick if there's no power to do it we're looking at a universal sense of things a universal malpractice, a universal belief which we are call, calling sick person. And the only reason we call it that is because we believe that such a thing is possible. We believe there's a power to make a person sick. We believe it. And our belief is false. There's only God power. There's only spirit. We must come to that side where we know God power is all that is here. God power is the power behind my life, my business, my relationships, everything in this world is but the outer appearance of what I know to be invisible God power. And therefore, that God power being the only presence there is no other power to make anything evil or bad. Only thinking makes it so. Right where every evil appears, invisible God power is in your consciousness. You're purifying your thought. You're preparing a habitation for God in your consciousness. You're opening the way for the comfort. Antichrist is the only cause of discord in the world. That means the universal world mind. Antichrist is the only cause of discord in the world. So now you identify everything you see as universal world mind or antichrist or belief in two powers. They're all saying the same thing. Do not battle it. All of this is mirage. Rest in the word. Do not go out to fight the enemy. This is malpractice. This is a belief in two powers. This is antichrist. This is universal hypnotism. Drop it. Do not sit up and do not fear it. Do not protect yourself from it. There is no reality to it.
There is no it. This is Jello talk. There is no it. How can there be a sick person if all there is is spirit? There is spirit which we are misconstruing as a sick person because our human mind is geared to the world mind. Out of the human mind, our Christ mind reveals the perfect reality that is there. And so once it is recognized that the so-called powers of this world are not powers, Joel says, it will not be long before heaven is established on earth. No material or mental powers can operate in the consciousness of an individual who lives in the realization that God's grace is his sufficiency. We had that meditation last week. And now I think that's probably a good way to end today. God's grace is our sufficiency but it's of no value to us if we're in a human mind. Spiritual grace does not function that way. Spiritual grace did not heal a cripple through that cripple's human mind. Spiritual grace through the Christ revealed that there was no power to keep that individual as a cripple. Spiritual grace through your Christ mind reveals there is no power to limit you or make you lack. There's no power to kill you. There's no power to make you sick or suffer. Spiritual grace reveals through your Christ mind that you are perfect as your Father. Christ mind. That's how chapter 5, 15 is going to begin. I am the vine. The Christ mind is the vine. You want fruit? You want grapes? They come off the vine. The fruitage only comes from the Christ mind, which is the vine. And my father is the husband. The infinity of God through the Christ mind produces our fruitage the blessings of grace as we walk in the light and then it cannot come nigh thee we're going to take the advice of the master arise and let us go from hence and that means take up your divine self rise to your divinity let us not look back at mortality. There is nothing happening except the perfect activity of God everywhere. That is the Christ consciousness. Please bear with me just one minute. He that believeth on the Son of God, meaning on Christ as his identity, hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us eternal life and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath life he that hath not the son of God hath not life that's the first epistle of John the fifth chapter verses 10 to 12 as you come into the Christ mind you come into the awareness of life eternal. Without it, we're running in lifespan. 